at the end of our first segment, I had just introduced you to F. Kenton, Doc Bishore. He's president of the World Bible Society. And uh, he had said it's uh, this matter of the budding fig tree, talked about in Matthew 24, 32 through uh, 33. Um, he says it's one of the most controversial parables in the Bible. And uh, I wanted to read to you some things that uh, he had to say. And I quote, Hal Lindsey, the author of The Late Great Planet Earth, believed he had unlocked the secrets of this passage in Matthew 24, 32 and 33, suggesting uh, the generation that saw the 1948 rebirth of Israel as a nation, purportedly symbolized by the fig tree, would see the return of Jesus Christ. In what became the world's best selling nonfiction book in the 1970s, Lindsay wrote a, biblical gener wrote a biblical generation is something like 40 years and suggested that, quote, within 40 years or so of 1948, all of these things would take place. But when Jesus didn't return in 1988, Lindsay's interpretation of the passage came under heavy criticism. And for many years, the church largely shied away from teaching Bible prophecy. That's something, by the way, I'm not aware of. It seems like it's just gone on and on and on. Anyway, I go back to quoting. Now, World Bible Society President F. Kenton Doc P. Bishore argues Lindsay's uh, interpretation of the passage was correct, but he was wrong about the length of a Bible generation. Remember, this article is taken from charismamag.com, December the 3rd, 2012. Uh, instead of 40 years, Bishore says a biblical generation is actually 70 to 80 years, basing this on Psalm 90, verse 10, which says, the days of our life are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years. Based on this, the author of When, When Will the Rapture Take Place, and The Millennium, The Apocalypse, and Armageddon, believes the second coming will occur sometime between 2018 and 2028, or 70 to 80 years after 1948. Taking into account the seven-year tribulation, be sure expects the rapture to occur sometime between now and 2021. Oh, dear Lord, I wish you'd give me length of days so that I could be here past uh, 2028. Well, anyway, uh, I want to skip over a couple of paragraphs. And uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, quoting again. It's, it just says the fig tree will blossom, and this generation won't pass away until all these things be fulfilled. And this is a quote from Hitchcock, which has slightly a different view. But Bishore continues uh, and says, The Bible often uses the fig tree as a symbol for Israel. In Matthew 21, Jesus cursed the fig tree after driving the money changers out of the temple, a prophetic foreshadow of Jerusalem's destruction in 70 A.D. Bishore says later in Matthew 24, Jesus speaks of the blossoming of the fig tree. Adding, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. A prophetic reference to the rebirth of Israel in 1948. Bishore says, and that generation, or the Jewish boy representing Israel, will live to see the second coming. He sure believes. While the Bible says we won't know the day nor the hour, it certainly says that we will know the times and the seasons, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 10. Be sure says this Jewish boy growing up demonstrates we are in the time and the season of the Lord's return. So again, I'm just making the point that many in the field of specializing in biblical prophecy and others that don't specialize in it believe that the fig tree 
spoken of in Matthew 24, 32 and 33 is fulfilled uh, in 1948, May of 1948, May 14th, when Israel became a nation again. Well, I want to read uh, uh, just an, another thing or two here. Dr. David R. Reagan, who is, uh, he serves as senior evangelist for Lamb and Lion Ministries. He basically believes the same thing. Chuck Missler, in his message on the cursed fig tree, uh, uses the same terminology that uh, Chuck Smith did, calling the fig tree an expositional constancy. And uh, he has the ministry uh, Koinonia House. You can find that at khouse.org. Uh, John Hagee was on Glenn Beck's program, I think it was around April of 2013, uh, or maybe that's just about when it was posted on YouTube, I'm not sure. But anyway, he goes over 10 primary signs of the Lord's return with uh, Glenn Beck. And uh, the second or third uh, sign he refers to is the rebirth, the rebirth of Israel. And then he quotes Matthew 24, 32. Uh, Dr. David Jeremiah, many of you will be familiar with him. He has a little study on the signs of the second coming. And on page 13, I quote, Jesus in Matthew 24, 32 through 35, uh, told this parable. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And then, after quoting that passage, he says, Jesus is telling us to examine the fig tree for signs that summer is coming. We can tell by the leaves and blossoms that summer is on its way. The tree won't tell us an exact day, but it will offer a gentle reminder that the season is approaching. In other words, Jesus is able to determine uh, the exact date, but as we see the gathering of signs, we'll know his return is near. That's why we study prophecy. We are closer to Jesus's, or to Christ's second coming than ever before. Now, let, let me make a point here. And uh, uh, there's no reason reading. There, there's just so many. There's a plethora of books and messages on YouTube, God to Vimeo and some of those. Uh, uh, all over the place where prophecy teachers and preachers believe that the fig tree is a symbol of Israel. And by the way, I do too. But I want to make some things very clear and I hope that you'll see this. They're saying that this prophecy in Matthew 24 is fulfilled in May, May 14th of 1948 when Israel became a nation, once again, had their own land. But there's some things that you need to pay attention to. We'll need to pay special attention to them. Now, David Jeremiah, in his little study on the sons, excuse me, the signs of the second coming, and again, I was on page 13 of that. Uh, this is a quote from it. He says, um, Jesus is telling us to examine the fig tree for signs that summer is coming. Now, summer is a time of growing. What follows summer? Well, then we have the autumn and we have uh, uh, harvest time. Summertime is a time of growing. So whatever he's talking about, we're talking about a time of growth. We're not talking about a time when everything shuts down. That's the end. Jesus has come. And then there's some seven, seven years and another thousand years after the last day. And if you haven't listened to that study on what happens on the last day, you need to listen to that also here on uh, 
the sword TV. Well, I, I want to put these things away and uh, excuse me. Uh, let's look at these passages. Uh, the first one I want to go to is Matthew 24. We've been reading from there. Matthew chapter 24. And uh, we'll start at verse 32 or 33. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Summer, not harvest time. Summer, a time of growth. So you too, when you see these things, recognize that he is near, right at the door. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now, Let's go to Mark 13. Remember Matthew, Mark, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 all speak to this same matter. It, it, they're all the same thing, just written by different authors, of course. The Holy Spirit speaking through all of them. Uh, Mark chapter 13, and uh, let me see, verse 28, verse 28. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender, it puts forth its leaves. You know that summer is near. Summer, a time of growing, not harvest time. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Of what day and hour? The hour that the heavens and the earth pass away. But of that day and hour, what hour? When Jesus comes again. But of that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Now, that's all pretty clear. Now then, we need to go to another passage. We need to go to Judges. And I want you to go there with me to Judges chapter 9, and we'll pick up at verse 7. Go with me to Judges 9 and verse 7. And, and I want us to look at... Uh, what God says about the fig tree, but we're going to look at how, what, what's the setting and what else is being said, and then we'll go to uh, Luke 21 and see how all of this connects and how this begins to tell us something other than what all these wonderful men of God, prophecy teachers, are telling us. I think I'm going to stop here for, for now, and uh, in the next segment, you should already be at uh, Judges chapter 9, beginning to read with me at uh, verse 7.